the name of the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit, amen. I like to welcome you all. My name is Father Ed Broom. I'm an oblate of the Virgin Mary, and I'd like to welcome you all to our Perseverance Family Conversation, and as always, it's great to be with all of you on this wonderful Saturday. And as always, we'd like to start off our conversation by inviting Mary to be with us. Mary has many wonderful titles. Mary is the mother of God. Mary is the mother of the church. Mary is the mother of each and every one of us. And as we pray in the Hail Holy Queen, Mary is also our life, our sweetness, and our hope. So as we start off this day, let us lift up our minds, our hearts, and our souls to Mary who is truly our life, our sweetness, and our hope. Together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of of our death. Amen. Now we'd like to invite to be with us our spiritual director. Our spiritual director is the Holy Spirit of God. What a great grace and privilege it is to have the Holy Spirit to be our our spiritual guide. Like Mary, <coughs> the Holy Spirit has many wonderful titles. Holy Spirit is known as the Paraclete. Holy Spirit is also known as the Gift of Gifts. Holy Spirit is also known as the Sweet Guest of the Soul. Holy Spirit is also known as the Sanctifier, who makes us holy. Holy Spirit is also known as our Consoler in the midst of many trials and tribulations in life. It's the Holy Spirit that will give us great consolation. Holy Spirit is also known as the Counselor. He will give us proper advice <coughs> as we pursue true holiness of life. Holy Spirit is our interior master or teacher. St. Paul, in his letter to the Romans, says that we really don't know how to pray as we ought. But it's the Holy Spirit it intercedes for us so that we can say, Abba, Father. We don't know how to pray as we ought. The Holy Spirit intercedes for us so we can say, Abba, Father, that we can talk to God as our loving Father. So let's beg the Holy Spirit to give us a lot of light in our intellect and the fire of love, and the fire of love to burn ardently in our hearts. As we pray the classical prayer to the Holy Spirit, which many of you already have memorized. That prayer is, Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and enkindle within us the fire of your divine love. Send forth your spirit, and they shall be created. And thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who did instruct the hearts of your faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit, grant us that by the same spirit 
we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Well, Lady Fatima, pray for us. St. Joseph, pray for us. St. Michael the Archangel, pray for us. St. Gabriel, pray for us. St. Raphael, pray for us. St. Bernardine of Siena, pray for us. St. Ignatius of Loyola, pray for us. St. Maria Faustina Kowalska, pray for us. <clears throat> All guys, angels and saints, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. So we welcome you all to our Perseverance Family Conversation and as always, after praying with you, I will pray for you. And I'll pray for you in the greatest of all prayers. The greatest of all prayers is the holy sacrifice of the Mass. There's no prayer in the world <clears throat> more powerful than the holy sacrifice of the Mass. So I'd like to place all of you and your intentions on the altar. And offer these specific intentions. First, I'd like to pray that all of us would be open to the inspirations of the Holy Spirit. We've already started our novena to the Holy Spirit. So that we would be open to the inspirations of the Holy Spirit. And that we could pray often this prayer. Come Holy Spirit, come. Come Holy Spirit, come. Through the heart of Mary. Come Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come through the heart of Mary. My next intention, I'd like to pray for our families for the conversion of our family members. Pray for the conversion of our family members, the sanctification of our family members, And I'd like to pray also for the eternal salvation of our family members. Then I'd like to pray also for those who will be dying sometime this day. Our Lord said, what does it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his soul in the process? I'd like to pray for the dying, but I'd also like to pray for those who are dying, who are perhaps they're not well disposed. They're not well disposed or properly disposed. In this moment that our prayers, they would open up to God's infinite mercy. And be saved. So those are the intentions I'd like to lay on the altar in the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass.
So right now I'd like to give all of us a certain um, liturgical orientation. See, where, where are we? Where are we right now liturgically? Well, we went through the 40 days of Lent. in which you're trying to live out Lent, as Father Al Hall said, we have, we're, we're called to go, to go up, to go in, and to go out. To go up through prayer, to go in through a life of penance and mortification. We go out by practicing charity toward all we meet. We can take Matthew chapter 25 as a biblical verse to motivate us. Jesus said, I was hungry and you gave me to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me to drink. I was naked and you clothed me. I was in prison and you visited me. I was a foreigner and you welcomed me. When? Whenever we did it to the least of our brothers and sisters, we did it to Christ. So we want to go up, we want to go in, and we want to go out, not only in the time of Lent, but all of our, all the days of our life. Then, we entered into what is called Holy Week, with Palm Sunday. We started the Holy Week or Passion Week with Palm Sunday. Culminating in what is called the Easter Triduum. By Easter Triduum, my friends, so we mean the three days in the very heart of Holy Week. Three days in the very heart of Holy Week. which Holy Thursday we thank God for the Eucharist and the priesthood their Jesus Institute at the Last Supper. We thank God Good Friday for having Christ having shed his blood for our salvation. Holy Saturday we spend time with Mary reliving the passion of Christ through her eyes and through her heart. Then that very night we celebrate the Easter Vigil Mass in which we celebrated the key event in our Catholic faith. And that is the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's right, we celebrate the resurrection, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is truly risen from the dead. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Alleluia. So that beautiful, that beautiful Easter Vigil Mass in which the neophytes were baptized. They made their first communion. They were confirmed that holy night in which we lifted on high Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Easter, my friends, is the, is the very culminating high point of our Catholic faith. What it means that Jesus truly rose from the dead. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The fact that he rose from the dead, we one day will also participate in the Lord's Paschal mystery and his resurrection. We die with him, then we'll rise with him to new life. 
And that also means that Jesus, by dying and rising from the dead, will open up the gates of heaven for us. Then the short life in which we live, we're all headed toward eternal life in heaven. We should all have a longing for heaven. St. Paul says, I has not seen Ear has not heard, nor has it entered into the mind of man the wonderful things that God has prepared for those who love him. Beautiful words. And Jesus said, St. Paul says also, the suffering of this present life are nothing in comparison with the glory of the sons and daughters of God. And Jesus, uh, uh, Jesus consoles us with these words in the Gospel of John. I am going now to prepare a place for you, so that where I am you also might be. In my Father's home there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not tell you. I am going to prepare a place for you. So all of you have a place prepared for you in heaven. How encouraging those words of Christ. How encouraging. So for a whole week, rather eight days, we celebrated the great mystery of our Lord's resurrection from the dead. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. So that whole week we're celebrating with great joy Christ's being raised from the dead. Then the eighth day of Easter, we celebrate a night, another great solemnity. And this solemnity, my friends, is the solemnity of divine mercy. It was Pope it was Pope Saint John Paul II. It was Pope Saint John Paul II that instituted this solemnity. And he actually did this, my friends, in the year 2000, actually on April 30th, the year 2000, John Paul II carried out two very important actions. Some say that he, he himself said that that was the happiest day in his life. Because John Paul II instituted the Solemnity of Divine Mercy, which we all promote, all of you, to read the Diary of Divine Mercy in My Soul with St. Faustina Maria Kowalska. In that same day, April 30th, year 2000, Pope St. John Paul II canonizes the first saint in the new millennium. And that was related to Divine Mercy Sunday. That was Saint Maria Faustina Kowalska. She was the first saint to be canonized in the year 2000, the new millennium. Known as the Secretary of Divine Mercy. So John Paul II considered that day to be one of the happiest days in his life. So we say with the psalmist, give thanks to the Lord for his good, for his mercy endures forever. And if we want to experience God's mercy, then we should try to 
bring God's mercy to others. Now, my friends, I thought it was opportune today in our conversation to just go through the liturgical church year to see where we're at, to give us a certain orientation. So, with Easter, we have the Easter day that lasts eight days, and then there are the 40 days of Lent, but then there's the 50 days of Easter. That's right. We have the 40 days of Lent, then we have the 50 days of Easter. So we are right now at the, at the tail end of the Easter season. In most dioceses in the United States, specifically Los Angeles, where I am present. Tonight and tomorrow we celebrate the ascension of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ into heaven. The second glorious mystery. And what this liturgical celebration means is that the end of the earthly life of Christ, <clears throat> the end of his earthly life after he died and rose from the dead, that he appeared, he appeared several times to his disciples, to Mary Magdalene, to the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. to the apostles in the upper room, to the Blessed Virgin Mary, to St. Paul, to 500 people at the same time, So that's what we're celebrating today. This evening and tomorrow we'll be celebrating, my friends, the ascension of our Lord into heaven. And our Lord said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God and believe in me. I'm going to prepare a place for you so that where I am, you also might be. In my Father's home, there are many dwelling places, many mansions. So we rejoice in that. Now, my friends, we rejoice that our Lord went to heaven to prepare a place for us. Once again, I'd like to apologize to all of you because... Um, I've been given the 8 o'clock Mass uh, this morning. But the good news is I will be placing all of you on the altar. That all of you one day will go to heaven. So I'd like to give you my priestly blessing and then tomorrow I'll be with you for the full hour but I'll be placing you all on the altar this, this very day. And of course, the holy sacrifice of the Mass, the holy sacrifice of the Mass is by far the greatest prayer in the whole world. So I'd like to give you my priestly blessing. <coughs> the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in you. And I'm your host, Father Ed Broom.
oblate of the Virgin Mary.